Hey guys, so today I'm going to be giving you a template to properly cast your spells and have them work every single time. So yeah, like and subscribe for engagement, comment if you have any questions, and we will move on. Also comment anything that you would like to see from me as well. So the first thing that you're going to want to do when you are casting spells is to set your intention. Your intention can make or break your spells. I say people more so actually go wrong. Like they can, you can do the entire spell casting process correctly, but if you get your intention messed up or you're not clear on what it is, um, it's not gonna work. An example of where I see people going wrong here with this is I find that people generally like will say, okay, they'll cast a love spell and they'll be like, okay, I want this specific person to be romantically involved with me. That's not what you want to do. The correct thing to be doing is say, okay, I'm going to cast a spell to make myself more open to loving experiences or I am going to do something to find my, or like I'm gonna, I'm open to receiving my divine counterpart, right? That's the correct thing to do. Or to cast a spell on an existing relationship. So if you are with your partner, if that means, you know, you wanna keep the spark alive in the sense that maybe you wanna have more quality time with your partner, that would be your intention. Also, don't be afraid to take tarot and oracle cards or runes or journal, whatever it is, to get more insight on what it is that you should be doing because that's the whole purpose of our divination tools is to gain more awareness. So, you know, if you're like, okay, I want to be able to cast this specific spell, but I'm not sure what it is that exactly that I need, don't be afraid to pull some tarot cards and be like, okay, what is it that I need to be doing? What do I need to be putting into my spell here that's the whole purpose of it don't be afraid to question your guides or anything and ask them for help on what it is that you need to be doing that's that's the whole purpose of divination right so yeah now that you have that set down that's like the most important step is the next thing you're going to want to do is start focus focusing on like your setting and that also includes how you feel now if you are doing a spell that requires you to feel, um, you know, loved, like if you're doing a love spell, this is just the first example that I'm thinking of because it's probably the most common one that I will ever find um, is people doing love spells. Don't do it at a time where you feel like crap. That's You never want to cast a love spell when you feel like crap. You want to do it at a time when you feel really happy. Um, you know, this is also, you know, touching on the importance of why you need to properly, you know, cleanse the space that you're in, um, you know, meditate beforehand, do things to make you feel better before you go into that casting process. Also, um, if you are trying to do something, especially where if you're like doing a healing spell, don't do it in a place where you have clutter all around you. Like if you're doing it in your bedroom and you have clothing on the floor or um, if you have like dogs barking and kids screaming in the background, maybe not the best idea. I understand if you can't help it, but you know, you know, maybe try to like close the door, clean up a little bit, or also maybe doing it at a window or something like that where you feel like, okay, I can like look outside and see nature or something, um, something to kind of help. Also, if you know that you are able to go outside and cast a spell and you feel better doing it outside, that's the way to go. I personally prefer to cast my spells outside. Sometimes I do it inside if it's too cold, but you know, I know that I feel most at one with what it is that I'm doing when I'm outside in nature and you're gonna want to probably do that um, if that is available to you. Um, you know, like I said, setting is everything as well, um, as well as your intention, but setting is incredibly important and don't underestimate how far um, your mindset and your setting um, and the way you feel don't underestimate how far that can go in a spell because it's going to also aid in your concentration of what it is that you should be doing. Now that you have that figured out, the next thing that we want to look at is our tools. Now let's start off with candles. Candles, um, if you don't know the significance of candles in the folklore, it essentially just draws the spirits to the flame so that, you know, they will help carry out your intention to the universe, essentially to sum it up. There's obviously <laughs> more to that, but you know, I just want to be quick here, right? Um, but you know, Looking at the correct color correspondence, there are going to be a lot of people that tell you white is a replacement candle for any color. It is not. Um, a lot of people um, 
if they have everything, you know, right, sometimes it can actually um, confuse people when they're like, why didn't it work to the best of its abilities? And this is a, probably a reason why. Because, I mean, like I said, your intention and your mindset is everything. But, you know, your tools do help a significant amount as well. So if you're using white for a specific spell, um, that doesn't require purity, um, maybe not the best thing to do. Same thing if you're using, you know, <laughs> I don't know. I think you get the point. Also, things like rosemary as a replacement herb, that is not true, and rose is not a replacement flower. Make sure that you're using the correct correspondences, but anyways, we'll start with candles. Looking at the color wheel, um, I have a video on color magic up on my channel where I explain the color wheel and how you can use it because you can have the same color with two different shades and that's two different meanings, but still make sure that your colors correspond with your intention. And then also figuring out what kind of herbs, spices, or flowers that you like to use. I personally like to use flowers and maybe a few other things here and there, but figuring out what it is that you have on hand, you don't even have to like go out and buy things. You probably already have things in your spice rack um, that can you know help. Also, don't underestimate things like that you would never think of like vinegar or like <laughs> you know oil and stuff like that don't underestimate those things and like sugar you know it's always the random things in your house that actually go um a really long way but you know just figuring out what it is that you uh kind of need to match your intention and just kind of working with what you have also figuring out um this is another thing is your spell something that you want to happen really quickly, but you don't mind if it doesn't last as long? You might want to do a candle spell. However, if you're okay with it taking a little bit longer, but you want your results to be more long-term, something that works with earth or water energy can really help. And also, when you clarify your intention, if it's something that requires healing, like if you're casting a healing spell or you want to like un- um, unblock some chakras, maybe the water might be better for you to use. Um, and yeah, figuring those things out, understanding the purpose of, you know, the, um, of like a candle spell versus a, you know, jar spell or something is also going to go a really long way because I find people sometimes they, they want something that's going to last them for a really long time. Um, but they'll use like a candle spell and it's like, okay, it came to you really quickly, but a candle spell is not going to be very long lasting as opposed to a jar spell where it may take a little bit longer to get to you, but its results are going to be a lot more long lasting. So yeah, figuring out what it is there that you need, um, and kind of like also the time frame of how long you're going to need something to do whatever because also you are going to have to redo spells over time depending on what it is sometimes you don't have to sometimes you can do a spell to kind of do something and then you're like okay I'm set for you know whenever but depending on what it is like if you're doing a spell to unblock a chakra you might have to repeat those spells over you know a set period of time maybe sometimes I find every couple of months I might have to do a spell like that. I mean, mind you, I found other techniques to get what it is that I want, but um, if I was just doing spells only, right, I might have to do my throat chakra spell every couple of months because of just dealing with life circumstances, <laughs> you know? Um, that's kind of what I mean by that. You need to understand like your time frames as well and how long something is going to last because I find the other thing is people get really confused and think that their spell isn't like that good or that they're not very good at witchcraft when in reality it's gonna be like that for everyone. So just kind of so that is my spell casting template. Hopefully this was helpful for you guys. If you have questions you can definitely leave them in the comments and also comment anything that you would like to see from me, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!